contents of my uh, topic are divided into three parts. The first part is uh, AM, 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 PM, uh, for short, AM, XM, by looking at the low pole interpretation from component level and the system level. And then uh, we'll uh, give some, raising some problems with the AM, XM definition and how to solve that. In the second part, we'll go through some basic mathematics by introducing the so-called power waves and then followed with a couple examples of uh, the AM, XM dependence on the source impedance and how we can see irrelevant of the source impedance to the AM, XM characteristics. And at the end, we'll draw a conclusion and wrapping up the presentation. So when we look at the low pole uh, from uh, the component level and the system level point of view, so that basically uh, depends on where we are looking at uh, the device in the system. So when we look at the uh, device uh, at the reference plane one and two, so is the component level, it's typically the, this dot, the device and the test. And when we are like uh, designing a PA, we put in the uh, input and the output matching network, we are going to the re reference plane input and output. And so from a uh, system level engineer, uh, we are wondering how I can get my system level characteristics like the AMXM from the device level information. So normally the, uh, for example, the uh, low pole measurement, whether it's passive or active low pole, you get a set of uh, parameters, V1, I1, and V2, I2, and uh, which are also complex numbers. So you have this set of information uh, from your measurement and your you want to know what my system level uh, AM XM is. And that is a goal of the question that, and that is goal of this presentation is about to answer that question. So from a, from a system level perspective, the AM AM is a power delivered to the load RT divided, the power, divided by the power that the source made available. Uh, PAVS, well, we can also call it uh, the scalar transducer gain, JT. And for the phase EMPN, it is the phase difference between the output voltage, VO, at reference plane uh, O, uh, and the uh, uh, reference plane I, the input voltage, VG. But it is now the uh, dif phase difference between the V2 and the V1. Uh, it is a uh, common mistake that we take the ratio of V2 and V1 and call it the AMPN. So uh, then the, pr here's the problem. So how can we get the uh, uh, VG from the mirrored V1 without any assumption on the input matching network? The same question is how can we get calculate the VO from the V2 without an assumption on the input matching, uh, on the output matching network? So one may, one, we mar we may argue that, okay, I have uh, my V2 information and uh, my output matching network, it just, you can say, okay, it's a constant phase shift. Uh, that is true. But when you look at the input side, you have uh, V1, but uh, when you calculate the uh, VG or VI, you have to consider the input impedance of the device, and that is a device dependent, which can be very nonlinear. So now the solution to that is uh, we are introducing the so-called power waves, uh, A and B wave, the output wave uh, B and the input wave A. We take the ratio of B over A and we call it tra uh, complex transducer gain using the little hat notation. The amplitude of the GT is AM, AM and the phase of GT is AM, PM. So next, now here is about the uh, some definition and some mathematics behind. So the AMB waves were introduced by uh, Kurokawa from Japan in 1965. Uh, it is basically an electrical uh, analogy to a like incident light, reflect versus a reflect light and transmit the light uh, interaction with the object is very intuitive uh, understanding uh, phenomena of that phenomena. So the AMB waves are. Uh, are defined by the, uh, it's hard to, without a pointer, but uh, 
with the voltage and the current and uh, a uh, characteristic impedance zen out, we can obtain the N B waves. And uh, with a linear transformation, you can also obtain the voltage and current. But keep in mind that we here we introduce the characteristic impedance uh, zen out. And uh, so if we look at the output side uh, of a PA, that uh, if we choose the Z0 to be minus V2 over I2, and uh, you insert that equation into the definition of uh, uh, power wave A, is becomes zero. And the, your P out is literally reduced to be V2 square. And if you look at the input side, we chose Z0 to be the source impedance Zs, and your B1, A1 is a reflection between the source impedance, the source and the, the device. It's uh, between the ZS and ZN. So for a special case, when the source impedance is uh, conjugated much to the input impedance of the dot, your B1, if you look at the second equation, your B1 is reduced to zero, and your P in is A square. So that is like uh, when you have a perfect match between the source and the device, all the available power are being delivered to the data without any reflection. So this is a, a thought experiment. So on the output side of the device, we have uh, two uh, lossless networks loaded with a 50 ohm uh, termination. And this, uh, the taper uh, transforms the 50 ohm to five ohms and then a uh, 90 degree transmission line with a uh, characteristic impedance of a 50 ohm transfers from five ohm to 500 ohm. And with a one watt delivered power, we can calculate the voltage and current at each reference plane, A, B, and C. So if you look at reference plane A, we have the uh, load impedance 500, 500 ohm, uh, considering the the, uh, the ratio of uh, voltage over current is, is the resistance, and uh, the power, you can calculate your voltage and current to be 31.6 volt for the voltage and 0 0.06 and for the current, and they take that ratio, that's 500 ohm. So we do the same thing on the reference plane B and C. You can calculate the uh, voltage and the current. So you can see that the voltage and current are different at each reference plane, right? And then using the uh, formula, like for the B wave, we can calculate that the B, B wave at reference plane A and B and C respectively. But uh, when we're calculating the B wave, we're using uh, the voltage VA, IA, and 500 ohm for the reference plane A. And for the B wave at reference plane B, we're using the 5 ohm uh, characteristic impedance of the Z0. So you can, you can obtain a V at reference plane B is also one. And same thing on the reference, reference plane C, also one. So they are equal at different reference plane. And uh, so the B wave calculated using the loading impedance at different respective nodes are identical, while the A wave is zero. And so this is the key to making the abstraction of the matching networks and the therefore to transform, translating the component level data into the system level data. So in a matched, uh, in a matching network, we have the, uh, obtained uh, the information from the device level, right? You have V1, uh, I1, V2, I2, and uh, from there you can calculate your uh, A and B wave, A1, ZS, and B2, ZL, taking into account the Z0 to be ZS and ZL, respectively. And from the previous example, we show that uh, at the different reference, reference plane, your power waves, or A or B waves, are equivalent. So your B2 ZL is equal to uh, BORT. The BORT is uh, on the output side of the system, but uh, the, the Z0 is equal to R RT. And on the source side, you have uh, A1ZS equal to AIRG. So that literally brings the component level information to the system level. So next I'm gonna uh, talk, about about, talk about the source impedance uh, dependence of the EMXM. So the EMXM uh, characteristics 
they do depend on the source impedance. I'm not saying it's, uh, it's totally irrelevant, but that dependency can be incorporated into the post-processing. And this can uh, save a lot of uh, measurement time. So you, ha you obtain the, your information on the dot. You don't have to really do that on the measurement by tuning your source uh, impedance, like source pool, but you can get that information in the post-processing uh, steps. So we have defined uh, the transducer gain JT, right? And by introducing the power gain JP, complex power gain is B2 ZL over A1 Z in complex. So now we are using the characteristic impedance of the uh, input impedance of the device. And uh, if doing some mathematical uh, calculation, uh, you can see that the complex JT is equal to M times uh, complex JP. And the M parameter is, uh, is, the, uh, is the calculated by the source impedance and the input impedance of the device. And we can call it as a uh, input mismatch factor. So for that special case, when source is uh, uh, complex, is a con conjugated match, match to the input impedance of the device, the MIN is reduced to be one and your JT is maximized to be JP. And, uh, and the PEN is uh, equal to PAVS because there is no input mismatch. So all the available powers are delivered, is delivered to the dot. So here's one example uh, of the uh, uh, typical uh, low pool contour. And so uh, please keep in mind that the power contour's shape really depends on how you or where you look at the, uh, the data, where you look at the power during the power drive up. And so for two different uh, source impedance, uh, we're looking at the source impedance uh, relative to the uh, input impedance of the device. For a width bar equal to one is uh, matched. For a width bar equal to 10 is mismatched. So for two different uh, source impedance, we can see that the uh, power contour, if we look at the right side of the, uh, uh, the, rest, the, the right side of the graph, the uh, power contours for the two different source impedance, they overlap each other. Uh, if we, when we look at the, uh, uh, the power gain at P3 dB. So, uh, but if, when you look at the transducer gain at compre compression point of 3 dB, the power contours are, are different. So here it tells us that uh, uh, my my power my uh, my power is can be uh, is is irre irrelevant to the source impedance if you look at the uh, the JP and uh, so because that is uh, uh, the source uh, impedance is taken into account into the I'm a, I'm a parameter so uh, so here's a, a further look at the JP and the M and the GT. So for the top row is the amplitude and the uh, bottom row is the phase. For the, uh, if when we look at the JP parameter, uh, your different source, uh, different source impedance of the, uh, uh, when you're doing the simulation, you can see uh, they overlap each other and they mismatch uh, from the source, uh, be between the source and the dot are taken into account into the M factor, M parameter. And the same thing, because uh, the JT is equal to JP times uh, M, and it's the same thing on the uh, transducer gain. So next is a conclusion of my presentation. So the EMXM characteristics, uh, it can be represented by the complex JT. So with the obtained V1, I1, V2, I2 at component level, the system level EMXM, can be obtained through the transformation of power waves from voltage and currents using the smart chosen reference impedance. The input mismatch and device transconductions are split up, which where both contribute to the EMXM characteristics. And the exciting source impedance uh, does not affect the state of the power amplifier, but its influence on system level characteristics can be obtained in the post-processing. Thank you for your time. Uh, 
uh, here we, we use uh, the real, uh, real resistance. In the, you mean the uh, thought experiment, right? Here. Uh, no. So this uh, uh, answer, so your question is uh, here, the uh, Z naught, whether it's real or not. So from the formula, you can see that the Z naught is a complex number. The Z naught is a complex, complex number, but in the example, we just chosen to be a real number, 500 ohm for the simplif simplification of uh, calculation. Yes, yeah, yeah. But uh, here, uh, the uh, voltage, current, A and B, and the, the characteristic impedance are all complex numbers. It's uh, kind of uh, universal. Uh, we're using a uh, low pole, active low pole system. Active. And uh, active low pole system, uh, uh, when you get the data, it contains both the voltage current and A and B bit because it's a, it default systematically using the 50 ohm characteristic impedance there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. 